wasn't my pal, Sonic. I'm surprised you made it this far. Hold it right there, Eggman. And so, we are at Sonic's final boss, the infamous Egg Viper. So, right at the start of the fight, you want to run to either of the ends of these platforms, and then just keep running. Because, yeah, Robotnik's laser attack is pretty quick. You are going to get a load of that if you don't keep moving, and eventually he's going to stop and taunt you. Great idea, buddy. So, anyway, I think the best way to go about this is really just... Go in one direction until he's done firing his current volley of lasers, then immediately turn to the other direction and start running, and then just repeat until he does this. To be honest, it would be kind of difficult to actually hit him if he went straight from the lasers to this, because here, he's actually going to try a charge attack at you. It's fairly slow, especially if you're prepared for him, like you will be, since... Uh, the giant laser explosion is a clear indication that he's about to make himself vulnerable, so really, you shouldn't get shot in the face by his charge attack, because it's pretty easy to avoid. But yeah, otherwise, when he's just doing his normal laser volley, just uh, basically go back and forth, make sure you don't get stuck in the corners, and you should be fine. And one, two, three, boom. Yeah, he really does just kind of give himself away. The lasers are probably one of his tougher attacks, just, again, because they come out so fast, and if you stop moving, they'll probably hit you. I mean, it's not a guaranteed hit. Oh, actually, this is my least favorite attack. Stay on one side, move to the other. I don't think I actually got hit by that in any of my takes, but nonetheless, it's definitely one that gets me on edge, because I don't feel like I have a lot of room to dodge there, but then again, he never did hit me, so I guess it can't be too bad. Now, I think this is actually the last laser volley he's going to do. Ooh, yeah, see, I almost got stuck there, but I was still able to maneuver around. Now, he's going to shoot his little hand discs at you. <laughs> I can't believe you used my platforms as platforms! Now, at this point, he's going to go over and... ...do that. So it's a good thing he doesn't do his charge attack now, otherwise he'd just send us careening into the abyss. So yeah, basically the biggest concern you might have here is uh, the fact that they spin around so fast you might not jump correctly, and I did have a few moments where I jumped, but I guess I wasn't in an area where target jump would activate, or homing jump, or homing attack, that's what it's called, and I kind of screwed up and wasn't able to attack him, but he's done. That's the end of Egg Viper, so we did a pretty good job. It looks like in the end... I don't know what it is, but it certainly is something. And... Donk! He tries a suicide attack. It can take out a few of the platforms. But, yeah, easy enough to avoid. And by the way, this is not Sonic 06. You do not have to hit him on his suicide attack. I actually almost cleared this on my first attempt, but I got this mixed up with 06 and thought you had to hit him at the end, so... Whoops! And that's the end of Sonic Story. Not too terribly much to say about it. It is the most basic gameplay style. You run through the stages. You don't have to do it fast, but you should. Makes it more fun like that. And as I said before, level design at the end does get a little bit bad. 
the Sky Deck and Lost World are pretty much the worst cases, and to be honest, two out of the ten stages isn't too bad. Because Final Egg was actually pretty good other than that first section, and to be fair, this is actually pretty nice because they do try to offer gameplay changes. You know, you have like Casinoopolis with the pinball tables, you have Ice Cap with the snowboarding section, so they do actually try to mix things up and, you know, put a little variety into their platforming. I appreciate that. It's not like any huge gimmicks, but, you know, the subtle gimmicks can be pretty good as well. Uh, overall, I like all the level aesthetics. I don't quite know if I'd say they're as strong as the 2D games, but they are pretty close. I mean, in fairness, I do love Sonic 2, and I really love Sonic 3, so it's hard to compete with those, but, you know, Sonic Adventure, I'd, I'd say it also has some pretty good ones as well. I mean, I'd also say Sonic Adventure is my second favorite 3D Sonic game. Well, second or third, but it's up there. And I've found myself saying this a lot lately, but maybe that's not really an indication of this game's quality, more so the lower quality of the rest of the series, but nonetheless, despite how janky this thing is, I still love it so much. I mean, I'm kind of getting more into Sonic Adventure General now, so I'll kind of rein it in and just finish up with Sonic. Uh, I don't really have much else to say about him. He gets fastest thing alive out of Blue Hedgehog. Great score, great score, but yeah, fun to play as definitely the most fun stages in the game. Not to say I'm not looking forward to the future, with a few exceptions, but, you know, Sonic is the most basic, and this is the game where they actually understood you wanted to play as Sonic. He has the most stages, they're all pretty fun, so you play as Sonic a lot in this. So, all in all, Sonic Story, fun. So, I guess that wraps it up for that. Next time on Sonic Adventure, we're going to be going to the second story. And, obviously enough, it is the story of our good old buddy Miles Tails Prower. What was he doing when he wasn't hanging out with Sonic? Who knows? Actually, what was he doing when he was with Sonic? We'll also find out what that was next time on Sonic Adventure. That was a little redundant, but, you know, next time we'll be doing Tail Story. That's what I'm trying to get at. Hey, Face all your bets on the